Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Watch and Roll. Today, Watch 101 for non-watch people. What you need to know when you know little to nothing about watches. Why wearing a watch? You might not be aware of real advantages of wearing a watch. Here are a few. Your phone is not as practical as having the time on your wrist. You can't bring your phone to the pool. You can't bring your phone to the shower. But you can bring your watch with you. You can't grab your phone when your hands are busy or washing dishes. Getting your hands dirty or would you grab your phone while your hands are filled with mud? In some places phones are prohibited. At work, it's not professional to check your time on your phone. If you leave your phone charging, or how about when you wake up in the middle of the night and you turn your phone to check the time just to be blasted with the bright screen, don't you think that's rather inconvenient and uncomfortable? And that if you get to find your phone in the middle of the night. Just like these examples, there's tons of situations where your watch gives you lots of practicality and comfort to your life. If you want to add high efficiency time management to your life, you should probably get a wristwatch. Plus, a watch can be a piece of your personality or a piece of jewelry. There's lots of interesting people I have met because of the watch. That being said, here are the most important pieces of information you need to know about watches, along with some random facts. Number one, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a high quality watch. You just have to know which kind of watch you should buy. Types of watches, there's a dress watch, field watches, military, aviation, sport watches, which includes chronograph, racing watches, diving watches, there's G-Shock, then digital watches would fall under casual types of watches. Here's the parts of the watch. Strap, this is a band, bracelet, these are links, this is a clasp, this is an end link, this is the case, these are the lugs, this is the crown, these are crown guards, this is the bezel, uh, this is the case back, these are spring bars, this is a crystal, the face of a watch is referred as dial, these are our indices, hands, which includes the second hands, the our hands, these are the second markers, these are complications, uh, such as a date window or Anything that is another function other than uh, telling the time, it's a complication. Such as a power reserve, or a date, a, a chronograph, moon phase, etc. The movement is the word referring to the machine inside the watch. These are different types of movement. There's mechanical, quartz, tuning fork, and there's the microchip with smart watches. Mechanical watches are the oldest type of watch movement. They are the least accurate of all. They are most susceptible to magnetism, most delicate, but the most collectible. Most of the Swiss watches are gonna be mechanical. They don't work with electricity. There is no electric power inside the watch. It all works with many gears, jewels, and a spring that is tied. And as the spring is being uncoiled or untied, it releases energy which is regulated with a part called the escapement that is sort of making the spring to uncoil little by little and that's what moves the hands on a watch at the right speed. Many of these watches can be automatic which means that the spring winds up with the movement of your wrist thanks to a weight that moves some gears that ties up the coil meaning that the watch would keep working subjectively forever as long as you wear it. If you stop wearing it, most watches have a power reserve of 40 hours and the watch will stop working. So when you pick it up again, you have to reset the time and wind up the watch. Mechanical watches continue to work forever as long as you wear them, but they do uh, need some service after five years. Although many um, Japanese high efficiency Japanese mechanical watches can go up to more than 10 years without being serviced. Most of this technology goes back to hundreds of years ago and most of the credit of creating these systems go to England and Germany. But later on Switzerland took most of the manufacturer efficiency, so many German and English brands such as Rolex moved to Switzerland for financial and workforce benefit reasons, making Switzerland to be renowned for their quality. There's quartz. This watch works by an electronic device that measures at what speed a quartz crystal vibrates. Then it uses the speed of the vibration as a reference to move the hands at the right speed. Because it has a battery, capacitors and cables are included. To save energy, they set the second hand to move in one second intervals instead of a continuous sweep. England and Japan were working on the creation of quartz timing devices, but consequently Japan was officially responsible for successfully creating the first quartz watch and responsible for destroying a big amount of Switzerland's economy and market because quartz watches were able to be produced in a cheaper way but at the same time being more efficient, more accurate, more reliable, more shock resistant and almost immune to magnetism. Many quartz watches don't need to be serviced and will almost last a lifetime because there is not so many moving parts inside. 
At first, quartz watches were luxuries, and the first quartz watch, the Seiko Astron, cost the same amount of money as a small car. Later on, they were mass produced by finding ways to cut down quality. And later on also, even though quartz watches were regarded as inferior quality watches because they were severely mass produced, there is also very very high quality quartz watches which can be serviced every 50 years. These watches will keep on working even if you don't wear them and you should have a power reserve of 3 to 5 years. So after 5 years you might have to replace the battery. Although there is solar powered quartz watches which recharge with light so you don't have to change the battery and so the recharging battery would only need to be replaced after around 15 years. Quartz enable watches to add overwhelmingly amount of functions and the accuracy can be adjusted by adding radio wave reception and GPS, making GPS watches to display the right time no matter where in the world. Next there is tuning forks. This technology was created in America by Vulova. The tuning fork was a revolutionary tech similar to quartz, where the vibrations instead of being made by a quartz crystal were made by a piece of metal in the shape of a fork that would um, hum and create a sound produced by the constant vibration of the fork. This tech turned out to be exceptionally accurate, more accurate than generic quartz watches, but it would consume the battery more quickly. Spring Drive is exclusively in the very high-end brand Grand Seiko, which competes and in most cases go higher than Rolex in terms of quality, efficiency and modern innovation. The Spring Drive is an extremely difficult system to achieve, it's essentially a 95% mechanical system, but instead of a traditional escapement, it uses magnets driven by a quartz oscillator to slow down the speed of the mainspring and making it incredibly accurate for a mechanical watch. This system is significantly the most accurate mechanical watch to this day, also making it significantly more efficient, not needing as much service and being fairly immune to magnetism. Then there is microchip, this is found in smartwatches. The time display in the smartwatch is the same as the smartphone. The smartwatch will be totally accurate as long as it's connected to the internet. Smartwatches have a potential similar to a smartphone, but with some big downsides. They are not waterproof as other watches because it needs to be connected to the wall socket. So you can get them wet, but it's easily degradable and can only go a few meters below water and you. On the other hand, traditional watches can go hundreds of meters and sometimes even thousands of meters, making traditional watches to be superior in terms of reliability and durability. Traditional watches don't need to be plugged in the wall. Smart watches also have incredibly low life expectations, similar to a smartphone. On the other hand, a regular watch can last a lifetime. Fun random facts you might need to know. England, Switzerland, Japan and Germany hold the awards of making the best watches in the world. Switzerland was once said to be the best country to produce watches, but later Japan did beat all the European countries in formal competitions. In terms of quality, efficient, efficiency, durability and quality together, Japan is currently the country to make the best watches in the world in an objective way if you regard watches as tools. In terms of solely quality, Switzerland, Japan and Germany are almost on par but in terms of prestige, brand and social status and watches as jewelry, Switzerland has the upper hand. Other fan facts is Daniel Wellington, Michael Kors, Fossil and fashion brands are hated and regarded as bad brands because they essentially sell $10 watches for $100 because of branding. This is just a generic example but you get the idea. Rolex is originally English. Seiko is older than Rolex and have more world records. Steel bracelets are not originally meant to be for a dressy setup, but rather as a sport watch. Leather strap watches are meant to be for a formal setup, and rubber and resin watches such as the G-Shock are meant to be sport watches. But the rules are formally broken. For example, the Rolex of Mariner is a sport watch, but it's acceptable to be worn with a suit thanks to its refinement and black dial. High-end materials like sapphire and ceramic are used on high-end watches and the Japanese brand Citizen makes the hardest, most scratch-resistant metal being as hard as ceramic and sapphire. By the way, if you didn't know, diamond is the hardest material on the whole planet and sapphire being close to diamond. 
Japan makes the most accurate and toughest watches in the world in every division. The world record is just one second of deviation per year being held by Citizen Thermocompensated Quartz Caliber 0100 and the toughest world records being held by several G-Shocks on different tests. But Switzerland has more selections of brands to offer and have the world records of being of the most expensive and desired watches in the world. One example was the 17.75 million vintage Rolex once owned by Paul Newman that is the most expensive watch in at auction. The USA used to produce quality watches such as Waltham but after World War II this brand was bought by a Chinese manufacturer but recently the USA is trying to bring back the watch industry in the country. Whether you buy a Swiss, Japanese, English or German you can be assured that they will be good. And the worst thing in existence in the whole watch community is watch snobbery. Thanks a lot for watching guys. If you have any suggestions, comments or anything, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you later.